Today's episode of the Mind Sculptors podcast is sponsored by TCG Player, your source for all your trading card game needs. Use our link in the description the next time you get your cards to help support the show. Today's episode is also made possible by our Patreon subscribers. If you want to support the show directly, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Mind Sculptors and you can become part of the Sculpty family today. Or if you don't want to do any of that, leave a like and comment on YouTube or review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts as an offering to Algorithm Jesus. So I know that uh, people in our comment section have been hilariously enjoying the uh, Lime Scooter Wars of 2024. Um, the Great Lime Scooter Wars. Uh, so they are no. Uh, so I, I, I want to give a heads up to everybody. Welcome to the Mind Sculptors podcast. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Actually, it's the Lime Scooter War podcast. Uh, I'm your. I'm. I'm Callahan. Uh, <laughs> We're the Lime Sculptors. <laughs> We're the Lime Sculptors. Uh, so. But I have a story here that that mm-hmm. dovetails into the lime scooter uh, debacle a little this is bit. Good. This is good. Yeah, yeah, this is this is great. So um, earlier this week, Forbes put out an article, okay, uh, where they looked at the top fifty uh, like cities in America and uh, ranked them on how like across like a bunch of different metrics uh, from worst to best on how bad their drivers were. Um, and when you came and visited uh, mm-hmm. Louisville back, yeah. like, like you can attest like the, 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 the traffic here was weird, like weirdly bad for it. Like it's, it's a big city, but it's not like yeah, a yeah. big city, right. Where it right, should like right. every exit it's like backed up for miles for some reason. Um, yeah. So I just assumed, well, maybe I'm just like, you know, used to the smaller cities or something. Turns out, no, um, Louisville ranked seventh (laughs) in this as the seventh worst driver in America. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Tragically bad. They're behind Dallas, Kansas City, Tucson, Detroit, Memphis and Albuquerque. Albuquerque has the worst drivers in America. Um, but the, the reason I bring this up is I am willing to, I, I, I think that this transcends like the motor, like motor vehicles, right. That are on the road. I think this now extends and I'm willing to say this extends into the lime scooter drivers of louisville uh because for those of you who have been paying attention there's this whole lime scooter thing that's been going on with me you can listen to our other podcasts and get a heads up on exactly how annoying it has been they're no longer in my neighborhood thankfully however yesterday morning i'm taking Cassidy to work she got up late i'm dropping her off and some dude just Riding a lime scooter. I don't know how, but he almost rode headfirst into my vehicle while I was driving, like just just turning into a uh, hospital. And so I'm convinced that your little call for action that you uh, had last (laughs) week is that this is actually a listener of the show who tracked me down. <laughs> yeah, there's some, trying there's some to assassin scooters coming around. Assassin <laughs> scooters. <laughs> yeah, the, thank you thank you for to the 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 scooter assassin cult <laughs> that I hired. <laughs> I, 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 it was funny because I was telling you yesterday, we were, we were talking about it a little bit because we got some comments on the podcast. Uh, and, uh, I was like, oh, people seem to really like the, the bit. People think it's funny. And I was like, I, I was ready to put it to bed, but 
I woke up this morning. I took Cassidy to work. I almost ran some motherfucker over because he almost ran into my goddamn car. Uh, <laughs> head first. He was going the wrong way on the road. Turns uh-huh. weird into the middle of the road somehow, like out of nowhere to like cross the street. And I'm just like, I'm driving. What the fuck? I outlaw this shit, man. It's absolute pandemonium. Pandemonium in the streets of Louisville. I tell you. Um, I, I tell you what. When you when when Louisville drivers can figure out how to drive fucking cars, you you guys can have scooters back. I guess. <laughs> when you guys learn to use it right, I'll let you have it back. <laughs> fine i move away from here in a few months anyway so it's it's i only have like a few more months of this bullshit to deal with um (laughs) all right you're doing my friend (laughs) scooter assassins your windows are closing your your window is closing if you if you're trying to if you're looking for buicks in louisville uh kentucky your your window is rapidly closing uh (laughs) with the following license plate no okay (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah how uh how was your weekend, friend? You played in a tournament out yeah, yeah. Uh, over the weekend. How'd that go? It was a local five rounder. Um, so apparently, there's a a like store version of 95 gaming, which I was not aware of. But like 95 is like one of those stores that like you, you see, see them at like every event, yeah. every event, right? Yeah. Um, but it was super sick. We we'd heard about it through the grapevine, the Philly Discord, and I was like, all right, Delaware is not that far away, so we like sort of put it on by. It's like 45 about, minutes or so. Yeah, 45 50 minute drive. Um, Lou and I both showed up uh, as a five round CDH tournament. Uh, I ended the Swiss in first place, but unfortunately lost in the top 16 to our opponent having like the exact sequence of spells that we did not have interaction for. Like uh, us as a, as like a responsive team had a fierce guardianship, a tainted pact, a red elemental blast and abrupt decay. And like one other thing. And (laughs) They, they were they able to get through all of that. Yeah. So, well, they sequenced Ranger Captain, to which I had to flip over uh, through Matane to Pact, hard cast a Mind Break Trap because I couldn't dig for silence anymore because I was like already losing win cons for the Tainted Pact just to get to Mind Break right. Trap. Right. Um, and they specifically had Fluster Storm as the backup, which the Red Blast didn't do anything about, the Fierce Guardianship didn't do anything about, and the Abrupt Decay didn't help at all. And they had exactly enough Fluster mana. Storm answers a lot of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> they had exactly enough mana too to be able to Demonic Tutor Thassa's consult with Italian out, ending at one life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like crazy. <laughs> uh, so. For sure. Yeah, that was one of those times where I was like, you know, sometimes I'm not meant to win a game, I think, maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I that's that was what was it? The uh, your round five opponent uh, mm-hmm. in your uh, thing you did at what was it? Galaxy mm-hmm. Con or whatever. Yeah, the cash the, for Clash, or Clash the, for Cash. I keep saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the Borg Burigmos and Fibbleford player who just had it on turn two and you're just like. I don't know what what to do about yep. that, right? Like it's it just that happens sometimes. Is right? No tutor food chain win turn two, yeah, no big deal. <laughs> With like the god opener for like any uh-huh. deck, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you just get the nuts. Yeah, sometimes you just get the nuts. That's okay. Um, so today we're uh, going to be talking about. I want to see exactly how he worded it. Uh, how to play against irresponsible players uh this is a question submitted by a patron of the podcast uh just ice mm-hmm. who uh gr- long time patron of the podcast mm-hmm. big very thankful for them and uh they asked this question in our discord how to play against irresponsible players and how to use them to your advantage mm-hmm. and so uh this actually seems like an interesting little topic to to talk on oh, yeah. and uh kind of elaborate on and uh it, it's kind of interesting because we've we've talked about uh a lot of get ready for survivor anal or uh analogies galore mm-hmm. because uh mm-hmm. this is <laughs> this is uh the episode for that um for sure but yeah so like when we're talking about irresponsible players i think it's kind of interesting like important to define what that means and so mm-hmm. uh I guess to me, irresponsible players are like players who 
either, like, like I don't want to say are making dumb decisions, right? Because there's yeah. like a difference between make being irresponsible and just like not thinking about yeah. like, or not caring about like the consequences. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I think it's more accurate to say are is really just the not caring if about sure. the consequences of doing X, Y, and Z. They're more yeah. concerned about the short term gain. Right. Right. And I want to sort of separate this. Um, sorry, one sec. Didn't want that pick up in the audio. <laughs> <laughs> it's just water. <laughs> That's gonna cut great. <laughs> <laughs> now they're gonna be like, oh, he's not eating, you know, he just pours his water in a cup, fucking nerd. Like. <laughs> um, but I want to separate this this sort of narrative between like like I don't want to be describing players as being like objectively stupid right like like i feel like that's not a helpful part of this conversation right like so like uh when people are making poor decisions right there can be a number of different reasons behind it occasionally they miss a line occasionally they're just like they're just not on it and that's fine right but like uh this the intent of this episode is not to be like yeah haha people around you are so dumb and you're so smart haha flex on them right like because because i feel like that's a very easy way that this could come off in a very negative space right but Mm -hmm. There are, for any number of reasons, people who are not going to be aligned with the way that you are mentally approaching the game, right? Whether it's they are playing hyper aggressively when they don't need to be, right? Um, you know, and I mean, like, you can see illustrations of this all the time. I mean, I literally, uh, in, in that video that Cal is referencing, mm-hmm. I have uh, a player who I blatantly, like, walked them through the exact, like, <laughs> consequences of what would happen. If they, I, it, you're, you're such a good sport, because if that would have happened to me, I would have been like, man, I must be fucking Nostradamus, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. So, like, I, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I definitely, like, packed up my cards very quietly and walked away because I was pissed off. Right. But like, yeah. <laughs> um, but like, you know, sometimes you will walk someone through a line being like, this is exactly what's going to happen if you do this thing. And then they do it. And it's exactly what happens. And you lose the game according to it. Right. And that's mm-hmm. a part of CDH, right? You are playing a multiplayer game and sometimes you will, you know, it's, it's the stupid Batman quote, the, the, the unstoppable force means an immovable object, right? Like sometimes you just, you hit that and that's fine. It, it happens and it's part of the game and it's why variance matters. And it's why people refer to top 16s more than tournament wins and all of that stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, like you when it comes to the variance of the format, it's, it's who's consistently doing better blah 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 blah. anyways mm-hmm. that's that's a completely separate conversation that we've had a thousand times on this channel but like point being we are trying to narrow down those times in which that happens and where we can kind of be like whoop and like <laughs> jump over the obstacle in our way right, right? sorry for the audio only podcast um <laughs> so uh the idea being you know instead of running headfirst into a wall we are stepping sideways uh and and letting the wall aggressively fly past us um and <laughs> yeah, as walls that thing do. that thing walls do fly uh. <laughs> um but the idea is like how do we circumvent those those opportunities or, or lack thereof right when 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 these situations come about to us um right um so like <laughs> I don't know if you want to take this next start, but like, let's do you want to provide some examples, right? Because I, I have a couple that have like, yeah, I, I, I definitely could could uh, do that. I, I think for me, a, a good example of this. You know what? You go first. I'm actually like sitting here and I'm like uh, trying to think of one off the do- off the dome. Yeah. And I actually can't think of one off the I dome. Got, right. I got right so away. many. <laughs> I believe you. You play in significantly more tournaments than I do. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so, like, this is one of my favorite examples because uh, it was it was one that I picked up on pretty early and did play around. Right. So, for example, um, player A goes, and they're on Najila, right? Mm-hmm. Very clearly, the NBC Najila, right, on ad nauseum, all that stuff, right. I'm playing Winota at the time, um, and I go to combat. And they're doing like the big twitchy eyes, right? Like they're they're clearly like ready to blow some stuff up, right? And I'm at the point where I'm not a threat at the table. I'm not doing anything. I'm just like developing my board barely <laughs> at this point, right? Right. Um, and Najila's like, 
don't you be sending something my way? Like, I'm going to blow up your stuff. And I was like, okay, dog. Like, right. So at the time, right. Uh, <laughs> for me, there was other decks at the table. They were not ad nauseum focused decks, right? But I still choose to go along with Root and Toot and Cowboy over here. And it's because, <laughs> specifically, <laughs> right? Uh, I know that this interaction that I can use later in the game, right? Okay. Now, the lesson to not take from this interaction is, well, I can threaten everybody to blow up their stuff at wrong times and get away with this. No, <laughs> uh, that's not how this works. They eventually did get attacked a bunch and made themselves sort of the heel of the table, right? Because everybody was like, they're sort of just firing off whatever guns they have, right? Uh, and like trying for pretty poor win attempts, right? But while that was all happening, I was getting my attacks for free right. on other players, right? And getting one out of flips. And there was points where I did have to attack them, right? But it was after they had already sort of, you know, gone. And Ran did out the, of ammo. Yeah, yeah. They did they, they reload their six shooter, right? So, like, <laughs> um, and eventually I was able to take that game down, right? But that was because I was like, okay, this person's clearly not thinking with the mindset that I would approach a tournament with, or, you know, most of my other opponents would approach a tournament with, yeah. right? They're clearly uh, responding from a very emotional place, right? So, therefore, let me just be like, pat, pat, all right, buddy, do something else, right? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, later in the game, they would listen to me more and stuff like that because, like, they were just doing the thing, right? Like, they, they clearly had a very specific way that they wanted to approach the game, right? And in, in that circumstance, it, it's very easy to identify it, right? Like, identify that this is how they wanted to play things. I'm like, sure, I don't agree with it. I would never play like that. Probably going to lose more games by playing like that. But let me at least air on the side of partnership while I'm here. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. I think like one of the examples that I can think of, like right off the top of my head is uh, specifically playing at a, I believe this was a draw at an event where I was playing against an Urza player there was a rog side deck. I forget what the other other player at the table was. Um, this was like almost a year ago. And we had this Urza player who was kind of like end step activating Urza like it was a Thrasios, <laughs> which okay. is heads up. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> can't cast those things at instant speed unless they're instant. Uh, so. Um, we're, he's exiling like important stacks pieces. I'm seeing static orb, winter orb, curse totem, all that, sh- or not curse totem, but like all that shit, right? The good pieces in Urza just go away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, me and the rog side player are just kind of sitting there with, I, I think it was a Timnacrom deck was the fourth deck at the table going oh shit this tim necrom player who is like just going unmolested in this game is about to win the game because all the stuff that was going to stop them is just gone um because we've just exiled it for no particular reason um and so player goes to act and step activate urza and we say before you do that let's like we have a response (laughs) Mm-hmm. To, to do a thing before you do that so that we can maybe like think about this a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And so we just like talked through what was happening and why like, Hey, this player is about to go through that thing. And they ended up at activating ours anyway. But what ends up happening, I didn't win this thing. <laughs> uh, the I wrong side stories end up with, uh, yeah, and they chose not to listen, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah it, it was they chose not to listen, and that was fine. We, well, and I think that's important because it's like mm-hmm. you when there are irresponsible players at the table, I think voicing like, hey, I think that we should probably not do this is like important. And mm-hmm. if they choose not to go, with like that, you know, especially if what you're advocating for is a responsible play, then mm-hmm. you have to figure out like, again, OK, well, I have to figure out how to play around that. Right. Yeah. And that was effectively what the rock side player ended up doing mm-hmm. in that table. Like I was just like, I, I, I think there was like a board wipe at one point that like sent me back to the mm-hmm. fucking 
like um the like stone age yeah and yeah. the rog side player ends up like finding this one window mm-hmm. uh where they were able to on top of this activation just kind of like go off yeah and like it's it's finding those things where when other people are playing irresponsibly like that or misplaying using yeah. that to your advantage because of how it's disrupted your opponents mm-hmm. where like if that player hadn't been doing that we conceivably could have stopped both the Timnacron player and the Rog side player. Right. And the game could have gone on. Uh, and that's just kind of like how that goes sometimes. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, that it like, and, and, and the thing that I want to make sure that I like, cause I have stories of people who like, don't know how cards work. Right. And that has right. impacted games, but like, I want to make sure to like clarify that that is not what we're talking about. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody mm-hmm. is newer to the format and is misplaying, I'm a lot more like generous with that. If that makes sense, like a lot more understanding of that, mm-hmm. like misstep than I am for yeah. uh, somebody who, who walks in and is very confidently misplaying. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but that that's what comes to the mind off the top of my head, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. And there's there's like so many different scenarios I can come up with, right? Like there are or dozens. I mean, I, I can talk about the the person who uh, attempted to give a player who had mulligan to four earlier in the game and who was clearly going to win the game a wish claw talisman because quote, well, you mulled to four, so I felt bad. You know, what I mean, like I can go into stories like that any day of the week, right? Um, guys don't do that (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah for sure i was not a big fan of of them being like well you deserve it bud um (laughs) uh but there's there's so many scenarios like this that come up right um and it's adapting to them is the important thing right so uh one thing that's you can kind of tell that we we've started off with like that initial level of understanding is that that question of like, why, why are they doing this thing? Right. So if mm-hmm. you heard the Menagila story, right. Uh, they wanted to play a very rattlesnake esque game, right. Where it's like, if you come at me, the Don't snake's going to play. Right. Yeah. Right. My, my advantage in this game is convincing you that I will, I'll get you. Right. That's, that's the <laughs> technique that they chose. Right. So, my first step was understanding where they're coming from, right? Rattlesnaking. Sure. That's, that's their approach to the game. I accept, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then diagnosing, right? Like how do I best on, you know, not piss off the rattlesnake. Okay. Well play the game in a slightly suboptimal way so that in the end it is optimal. Right. right. And then moving forward. Right. So the, the game you just talked about too, right? Like, like there's, there's a understanding of that. The, the question of, well, why are you activating this on the end step? Right. Okay. Like, what are we hoping to hit off of this? Right. What are you hoping to do? What are you hoping to hit? What are you hoping to achieve? Right. Right. Um, And and little pieces like that can can help to forward just the the group as a whole, right? Like the understanding of the situation that you are in, right? Um, And from there, it it gets a little bit more nuanced and complicated, right? Like that's that's the thing for sure. Yeah. But and I think this is why I often compare. Mm-hmm. the game to like survivor right because mm-hmm. i think this is like the the uh because this is something that a lot of people complain about with the format right where it's just like oh man sometimes you'll just lose because somebody made a bad play mm-hmm. and it's like i think the trick of being good at commander consistently is well it's not even i think it's i know the trick because you are just mm-hmm. a walking example of this is learning how to navigate the social side of the game Mm -hmm. because if you can't like this is the part about it that i think is very important to like dissect is Mm -hmm. like it is a social format there are Mm -hmm. four people talking you can't take that out of the game Mm -hmm. right uh you can try as much as you want Mm -hmm. it's never going away and you have to be able to figure out how to navigate those interpersonal situations in a way yeah. that is effective and benefits mm-hmm. you. Um, yeah. And that is something that I don't think a lot of people are like mm-hmm. mentally ready for going into tournaments, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think there's honestly been like so much negative PR about politicking lately that like 
it's it's just sort of becoming this like trigger phrase for people to pop off about it and like Mm -hmm. not really gain any understanding about it right yeah Um, (laughs) unfortunately and there's there's different levels to it there's people who once again in every department in every zone in every reality there's people who take things to extremes right right and that part of the conversation has sort of muddled a lot of this understanding right but like the politicking of you know like there is a difference between politicking in the sense where there is a person who is playing who is just always on right always talking always yep. chatting the whole time i've i've definitely seen people like that i can think of many examples like that i will omit names from from my memories mm-hmm. uh or from podcast but there's also parts of it that are much more subtle much more nuanced right understanding people uh listening in a situation like that where the the Najila player one i discussed i'm not sitting there talking for 20 minutes to this Najila player being like actually the line you're going for is rather suboptimal uh and you should rather not be used your like i'm not doing that to a person right in right. that situation i'm shutting up and i'm attacking the other people and dealing with it right mm-hmm. and adjusting accordingly right these things are a part of the game right so there's so much socially that that is relevant right yeah without it even being this politicking right like it is yeah. it is the social aspect of the game is everything for CEDH, you know, I, I shouldn't say everything, right? There's obviously being but I mean, able to like ex- it, it, it can grease the wheels, right? Like, I mean, I think right. that, like I, right. I, I think you talk about like uh, when you um, mention players who talk a lot, you know, mm-hmm. I talk a lot, not in the like I'm trying to convince you of something, but like the whole game, like I'm usually just like cracking oh. jokes, having fun, like mm-hmm. goof, like being a being really who I am as a person, honestly. Right. Um, but like in part of that is it greases the wheels a little bit and makes people feel a little bit more comfortable. And Mm -hmm. like sometimes when people walk in to a commander tournament, they are really on edge. They're really Mm -hmm. like nervous and they want to do well. And sometimes walking in and just being like a ball of like, Hey, I'm here to have fun. We're going to have fun and blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm going to crack jokes and stuff and I'm going to take it seriously the whole time Mm -hmm. greases that wheel and kind of pulls people back off of that. And so like that can also help people play less irresponsibly because people aren't on that edge the whole time. Right. Yeah. I mean, I literally have said this to, to several clients at this point now where it's like, no matter what your personality is, being yourself is okay. Yeah. And being yourself is rewarded in this format because if you are, Putting on an act while mm-hmm. also trying to execute your plays efficiently and like doing all that stuff, it's exhausting. No one wants that, right? Yeah. Like, if you are someone who is a little bit quiet, that's okay. Just talk at the right moments, right? Say mm-hmm. say one or two things at the right time. If you're someone who is like like Cal and I, right, a little bit a little bit silly, a little bit jokey, right? Then be that part of yourself as long as you're not being you know obnoxious about it. I've definitely run yeah. into those people as well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and. And just play the game, right? Like it, it's at the end of the day, right? Um, this is a format that rewards you for being yourself, being, mm-hmm. a, being a normal person, right? Um, and there are going to be people who that does not grease, right? There are people mm-hmm. who are like, <laughs> how dare you make jokes in my environment, right? And yeah, there are some people who take it oh, like a bit too seriously. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, that's I mean, one thing, that's that's an opinion thing, right? But like, yeah, the, sure. For, for our interpretation, right? Like that, yeah. that would be, it, you know, once again, there's a lot of this episode is like, you are not going to be able to follow everyone's, like, I mean, this is, this is a very psychological episode, right? Like, and, and yeah. I will throw that out there a lot. And this is once again, very deterministic of the, the social aspect of the game. You are not going to mentally link up with everybody. Mm-hmm. There are going to be people who you play against who are going to have completely different thought patterns than you. And it's not just about like, I'm playing objectively bad because I'm new, right? That's different. This is people who are like, this is how I want to approach the game, or this is how I, my brain says I must approach the game. And how do you adapt to that? Right. right. I've played with people who are like, I don't engage in politics. And it's like, so you don't speak to the table, no conversation about this is a problem. <laughs> You're not going to talk about that. And they're like, yeah, not at all. Like, Cool. So there is a, a, an empty seat over here that occasionally will cast spells. Got it. <laughs> uh, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's in, in, but that's okay. Right. Like it's not like I, I would not take that strategy. I think you leave a lot of percentage points on the table by adapting that strategy, 
But the, the point of this podcast is not to shame that, right? Right. It is. It is more so to say, like, how do you handle when people want to approach the game that way, right? right. Um, and you know, with, with, once again, so let's let's take that example, right? Because I have run into that person, uh, you know, not engaging in politics, being like, hey, you're aware that that's a throw at the table? Great, thanks. Pass turn. You know what I mean? Literally simple as a baseline of a thing, right? Being like. That is one half of a combo. We're on the same page about that. Great. Yeah. No politics here. That's pointing that out. And, and, and that's that. That's like one of the things where I'll do is somebody will play like my way of dealing with that. Right. Because like a lot of like me is I, I, I get that I am a big personality. Right. And I have like I am, you know, everything's big and small. There's no like in between. Right. Subtlety is not and, in your nature. No. Yeah, Subtlety is sure. like I, I am. I, I do know how to be subtle, but it's just like not part of the bravado, the whatever. Um, I mean, it's not the right word, whatever. Uh, but no, I, uh, I take issue with your, your statement that you know how to be subtle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, <laughs> you know, I, I've had play games and I think this is I want to say it was at Cincinnati where no, it was at Columbus because that was the one that had all the Atali decks at it where uh somebody was playing uh i want to say it was like crick or whatever and lays down like a bolus of citadel with it just like a, a virgin bolus of citadel nothing else like just that and i sit there and i'm like like if there's one other person at the table who's very quiet didn't really like engage with conversation and i just look at everybody and I'm like Oof. <laughs> that's in that's not good <laughs> Mm -hmm. And everybody engaged with that. Right. Where it's like, you don't even need to talk to people in a, like have a conversation. You can just comment on, you know what I mean? Just like, yikes, just stuff like that even is enough to convey the message to get people to get their like ears perked up in the right direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't want to like move away too far from like the central topic, right. Of the, the, you know, how to deal with these players playing on a different like uh responsibility or whatever yeah. um one of the things i like to think about is like really focusing on that question aspect right like what why you know mm-hmm. and, I, and i've had this happen right so for example um this is a good one that i've noticed a lot of uh a lot of people who play a decent amount in the format have moved towards right someone mm-hmm. goes for a suboptimal attack right uh they attack a player on let's say dawn waker as opposed to a player who's on blue farm right uh you know, the you, you want to hit the ad house deck is, is the point of my central thesis here, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so in that situation, right, being like the difference between oh, why are you attacking me? Uh, attack somewhere different, right? And the difference between that and okay, uh, I will understand that you're attacking me right now for future attacks for the next couple combats. Uh, their life load is much more of a resource than mine, just so you know. Move yeah. on, right? Little yep. things like that, right? People who want to attack where they want to attack, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I've also been in pods where, uh, you know, I've had people focus me down because I have a reputation, right? Which mm-hmm. is like, you know, there's some people who are going to be like, yeah, they should, right? Sure. At the cost of your own game. Don't know if I agree with that. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, there are things and like generally that. Generally when that happens, the person who's focusing you down is not the person who's winning. Uh, right. It's like, yes, you can guarantee that I do not win a hundred percent. Good job. Are, are you going to win? <laughs> right. Like, that's the question, right? If you can guarantee I don't win and you win all the power to you. Right. Um, but that's not usually the, the conversation we're having is specifically. Right. Um, and in a lot of the times, the question does become why. Right. Like genuinely, the, the question of why is so important to this conversation and 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 yeah. to ask it in a respectful way right like I, I can't stress that enough with this part of it it's like asking there, there's things- such a gulf between well why are you doing that and it's just mm-hmm. like what are we trying to do right now or not even yeah. that like i i just like what are we what are we like what's the concern you have right now on my board right 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 you know like even just that where like just the tone and like this is coming from somebody who like frequently has tonal problems right Mm -hmm. uh but like you know even just that subtle difference of Mm -hmm. even like like right there you could still hear that i was just like the fuck but there's a big difference between the fuck and so what are we trying to do right now you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like i don't know Mm -hmm. yep yeah and and it genuinely like i think this is just an underused 
skill in general is asking questions, like genuinely mm-hmm. asking questions at the right times. Um, you know, why is this happening? What is the thing on the stack? What are you hoping to achieve with that tutor right now? You know, little things like that are are such helpful tools, right? In the tool belt. And they say uh, the, the information gleaned from a question as simple as why can inform an entire game plan, right? Um, and sometimes you're going to get a stone wall back, right? And that's okay. Mm-hmm. You still ask the question at the right time. You know, worst case scenario, someone goes, uh, I hate questions and I will make sure to find you in the parking lot afterwards and break your knees. Right. Like and and that's, you know, if that happens, the call the T.O. Uh, yeah, yeah. If that, if that happens, maybe, you know, judge. luckily judges are there for that reason and T.O.'s for sure. Right. Um, but realistically, what's going to happen is they're the worst case scenario in game is them going to be like, ah, I'm not going to answer that. OK, cool. That tells me a lot, too. Right. That tells mm-hmm. me that they're probably up to something a little shifty. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and shifty in a, a playful sense, not shifty in like the, they're they're stacking their deck. Right. Like, <laughs> like, um, the shifty <laughs> in game. Right. 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 Like <laughs> they're not playing Liberator. OK. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they dropped their hand and they just happened to pick up the dock side on the ground. <laughs> my favorite meme of, of the past six months, for sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but you know what I mean? The, the, like, so just asking these questions can be super helpful to understanding where they're coming from. Right. Because like that's the thing. It's identifying that part of it. Right. Mm-hmm. And then diagnosing it appropriately. Right. And, and, and doing your best to adapt. Right. That is a and word I, think- I have. A bean to death in the past 24 hours mm-hmm. is the word adapt, right? Because that is CEDH. It's all adaptation, right? Because there, it is a format full of variables. Variance is a huge part of the format. And, and literally no one is denying that, right? But where you lose people and where a lot of the sort of negative narrative around the format comes from is people going, well, yeah, it's full of variables. There's no way to conquer that. And I think there are myself and a number of other very prominent players like Jorman and Freedom Waffle and Wounded Satellite and, and dozens of others can also prove that that's not true, right? Like you yeah. can get a grasp of it and things are not out of your control, right? So it is it is literally the format is all about variance management. Mm-hmm. Most of your skill in this format is managing variables. People who play Rogsai. You know what they're doing? They're managing variables because they say they're, I'm going to limit the amount of variables because I'm going to try and end the game in two turns. There's yep. so many less variables in that circumstance. People who play hard stacks, people like Mono White Guy Charles, right? Like he would play such oppressive stacks pieces because he said, I'm going to limit the amount of actions and things my opponents can do to disrupt what I'm doing. Right. Yep. <clears throat> Eliminating variables. It's all about variable elimination. Yeah, no, I I fully agree. And that's like one of the things where I think the the social part of the game is like very important to underscore with that. Right. Because it's Mm a. I don't know how to describe the social part in a way that doesn't sound like it's like you're trying to take advantage of people. Right. But it's just like, I mean, a lot of it is just trying to like, you know, when we talk about how there are you know, irresponsible players at the table. Sometimes the way of dealing with that is talking to the other two players at the table. Right. And a lot of times the other players at the table will see one person who's being super irresponsible and be like, oof, you know what I mean? Like a lot Mm -hmm. of times people are on the same page with you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, uh, you know, when when someone makes uh, a butt of themselves, <laughs> uh, they they tend to not exactly win the favor of the other players at the table, too. Right. Like they don't that win is, hearts and minds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do not win a million hearts. <laughs> <laughs> that is a survivor reference. For, for anyone <laughs> If, if you're watching this current season of Survivor, you'll get a kick yeah, out of that joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, honestly, and, and, and so let's talk about that Survivor analogy, right? Yeah. Because like, uh, you, you know, Survivor does have that like mechanical part of it, right? In the same way that, um, you know, we have the mechanical part of magic, right? Whereas like strong people tend to do well at the game yeah. where they do physical challenges and mental challenges all and the need time. need to survive right? on, on limited yeah, resources. Yeah, you need to survive <laughs> right. on an island, right? Fun fact, yeah. 
Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the, the, the allegory is right there, right? But you also, you know, have situations where you get stuck in the wrong survivor tribe uh, with somebody, right? Like in, in the same thing with, with people in your pod, right? You get aligned with people in a bad situation, right? Or uh, you just get a bad break. You draw the wrong cards, et cetera, et cetera. The, the analogy goes deeper. Point being, right? Um, you will see people in Survivor go to insane extremes, right? I mean, they will they will lie their freaking teeth off, right? And, mm-hmm. and this is always the fascinating thing, right? There was, um, I think, this this comes around. I promise it, it's a magic. It's about magic. Yeah. But uh, one of the most like I think famous wins of all time was uh, Tony, who yep. is great Survivor player, uh, lied his entire fucking ass off, yeah, right, to did. to win his first season fully swearing on his family swearing on you know his dead father all that stuff straight lied about it in the finale was asked about it said yeah i do it every time right the next time he showed up on oh sorry s- spoilers also uh, yeah, he, he won his season he showed up on survivor he lost in week one they kicked him off immediately because they were like oh he's up to the same shit you know what I mean? <laughs> he was uh, the you know, first he, person to go. Everybody was immediately like, nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were like, hey, dude, we all saw your season. No thanks. <laughs> right? Fun uh, fact about Survivor like, players, they're also Survivor fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, this is, right, and this is why the, the, the metaphor gets a little bit deeper, right? Because when you look at Survivor compared to CEDH, it's compared to the one tournament, right? Like, a, an entire game of Survivor is one tournament in CEDH, right? Right. Um, as opposed to when you look at people who come back from multiple seasons, now now it starts to have that analogy, that comparison, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so people who make a, a full full butt of themselves in the social game, like Tony did, right? Got him that first win, absolutely, right? We've seen people who do that, uh, who who get a win by like fully lying out. The and then teeth, you right? see like players like Shuri, who just very good at not being the center of attention, very good at like getting everybody's like trust. Mm -hmm. on the on the island like is very good at just like being on everybody's radar but not in a way that is so on their radar that like they're trying to get rid of you right 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 and so you know there is there's so much in that right and Mm -hmm. and that sort of uh, you know there are people who are going to show up right and they're going to have that that very short mentality of like this is my sprint it's not a marathon for me right mm-hmm. um and those people are going to have to adapt to as well right mm-hmm. who are going to be doing anything to to get those wins right inversely um you know uh there, there are times when you're going to deal with people who care just a little bit less you know uh the person who passes the wish claw like i mentioned earlier uh, yeah. i had someone at one of the eminence platinum events straight up say I went for a line because I was kind of tired when three of us were on winning ins. <laughs> like, uh, you know, like for sure. Right. And, and they were like, yeah, I was probably going to drop anyways. And we're like, why are you still playing the winning in slot? <laughs> right. Um, so like there, there's, there's stuff you're gonna have to deal with. Right. And like, that was a situation I can tell you for a fact. Uh, I was unaware of this, uh, factor ahead of time. Right. I, I mm-hmm. guess maybe I didn't ask enough, but but we lost because of it, right? So, like, I can't stress enough through this that there is no golden solution, right? M- what this episode can help with is making sure that the ones you can win over, the, the situations in which you can ask the right questions at the right times, in which you can dissuade what you would consider suboptimal decisions, mm-hmm. those are the things you need to fight for. And yep. sometimes you're not going to get there. Sometimes and there people are, there, rather play that way, right? And there are times where, and I think a really good example is like in that finals match from your, uh, what is it mm-hmm. that, uh, cash for, what was it called again? Clash for uh, cash. Yeah. Clash for cash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where it was like they had to give you a sissy tutor. It's not mm-hmm. a great position to be in, right? Yeah. But they had to give that to you because if they don't, we're losing right now. And Mm -hmm. like, that's one of the things that I think is very like important where a lot of people will just Mm -hmm. like, Oh, well you never give Sissé a tutor. And I know Mm -hmm. I joke on this podcast a lot about, you know, like never giving Sissé the tutor, but like Mm -hmm. you have to be able to recognize, Mm -hmm. uh, dead now and dead maybe later. I think you Mm -hmm. made a, a good comment, uh, when you were like, uh, breaking down in that video about like, um, 
you know, I will always want to play, try to make the game go as long as I can. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think like that is yeah. something that a lot of people need to like mm -hmm. understand is like a good way of increasing your chances of winning because the, mm -hmm. the more a game goes on, the more opportunities you're going to have to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to, to be clear, like um, situations where you demand a consultation for uh, a counter spell to answer something, right. Mm -hmm. And you have 10 cards left in your library. You have no actual win cons uh, and you're, you're playing for the draw, right? I play that game. I cast the yep. counter spell. I let it happen. Right. Um, you know, if someone proposes a draw at that point, then maybe I'm open to that conversation. Right. Um, but like to, to me, um, well, I mean, cause the, the draw is the goal at that point anyways. Right. right so that's right. fine. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, the situations like that, right. Where you can push to have more play in the game, right. Leave yourself, in, in dire positions where you can push to having more outs, I'm going to play mm -hmm. for the outs, right? You're you, like giving up, not casting your spells, not doing your thing, right? Um, it, it's just not going to be successful over time, right? And you're, you're going to miss opportunities that are on the table, right? Yep. Now, I'm not saying always cast your spells at every moment and respond to everything. That's not my point. My point don't is... Don't be like that Najila player, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, don't rattle snake, for sure. Um, but the, the point... The point going into it is that if there's opportunities to play the game longer, you should try those because you don't know what's going to happen. There's yep. we, we just talked about how it's a variance filled format. Um, one thing I don't want to leave this conversation without is this uh, other definition of irresponsible players. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes irresponsible cannot be people playing suboptimally, cannot be people playing emotionally, but playing to their game plan, which is inherently independent of your own. Right. Right. Um, and that's something to think about entirely, right? So uh, good examples of this would be like your opponent is on Dargo Ikra, right? Uh, they are in a situation in which they can shove into a risk study or maybe Itali is actually a great example of this. Yeah, because I've, I've had this situation come up a lot, right? When I've been piloting that deck where um, I will be playing, I will know uh, okay, Kinnon's got 13 cards in their hand. I'm playing a Gruul deck. I'm not going to be able to survive their turn, right? Without a miracle, basically, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the other option is I can shove into this Rhystic Study and hope they don't have enough creature counters to stop me. Now, I'm making this choice as an informed choice, right? And in the same way, your opponents can also be making that choice as an informed choice. Mm -hmm. You looking at them being like, well, this is going to throw the game. It's like, well, no, they could also be pushing for their own win, Right. Now, I've been on the other side of this where someone's yeah. like, well, I've got to shove for my window right now when they don't, <laughs> right. right? Like where they don't have to push at that time, where it's not like quasi deterministic that they're dead, right? Like where, where there's genuinely. I mean, the example uh, we, we, we brought yeah. up at the beginning of the episode, right, where uh, the player who you kind of like told them exactly how it was going to go yeah. down uh yeah. and it did exactly that and it went yeah. that way because they decided this is when i'm going for it right right without without listening to the pivot potential there right right so there there is those situations where where someone is playing to their game plan and it is directly antithetical to yours and that's gonna happen right mm -hmm. so at that time understanding them from an empathetic point of view is gonna mm -hmm. help too right so for example um this this came up where I was uh, Silicon Dynasty last year. Player playing Rog Thrasios was like, well, I got to jam the Isochron win right now. Right. And I'm like. Well, if you had waited because you have Thrasios in the command zone, it's right. not like things don't get better for you. You do have opportunities for things to get better for you. And also you've seen us with all this interaction in our hands. How did you think you were going to get through that? Right. Yeah. That's the situation in which. I go to empathize with their position. They think, well, my opponents are drawing a bunch of cards. Things don't get better. And it's like, well, no, I can play to that and say, like, you're a blue deck. You have Thrasios in the command zone. You can go longer. Right. But it starts with me going, well, what's their understanding of this perspective? How do I put myself into that perspective? Not right? just inherently. They are wrong, man. How dumb. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And and I, and once again, this is this is like more a basics on psychology uh, conversation than anything else. But like my hey, wife on for this episode, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, like but that's that's this game, right? Like genuinely, yeah. my, like one of my fascinations about psychology in general has been like, oh, hey, this is like part of my job now, which is yeah. like 
you know, having, you know, on a very, you know, basic level, right? We are not fixing people's deep inherent traumas, right? But like communicating effectively with individuals, which is hard for people in general, hard for yeah. neurodivergence, which are most magic players, right? And and so like working with that and and trying to empathize, trying to do your best to understand what can be nuanced and complicated emotions coming from people or, or understandings is is like part of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you can still be a great CEDH player and not be able to psychologically analyze your opponents, right? You can be a great implementer of your combos and, and executioner of, of things, right? But that part of the game helps, right? Like I, I have a client who's a psychologist and he goes, yeah, that's the easiest part of my game because like I know how brains work. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> um, I know how to talk to people. I do it for a living. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I feel bad. I, it's funny. This episode is a lot of you talking and, and a lot of me going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, you're, I, I'm like the choir behind the pastor right now. I'm just like, hallelujah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I, it, it's something I've dealt with a lot. You know, um, well, and I mean, I think it's important uh, to point out, right? Like you play in these events every weekend, right? Like this is this is what you do, like every week, (laughs) basically. Um, Right. And and I play Baldur's Gate. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But uh, Um, no, I I, I think that's like a really good point, though. I I think like being able to have those like social skills like mm-hmm. some of the like soft social skills I think is like really important and helpful um, to, I guess the big takeaway is like go to therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like I, I yeah. mean, like just generally. Yes. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Where's that better help sponsorship? Come on. <laughs> No, we we want to be sponsored by an organization that like pays their therapist. Well. Oh yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, where's that uh, uh, nondescript mental health? <laughs> where's that? Where's that private? Where's that private practice? <laughs> Cincinnati therapist hit me up. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, this is. I I think this has been helpful, right? I, I think at least for me, like. It, I, I've done a lot of absorbing of what you have talked about and I've like tried to contribute where I can, but you know, like I think that is like a good way of talking about it though, is like, you're really trying to use those interpersonal skills that you would develop in a, like a therapy session. And like, yeah. those are things where it's the ability to empathize and think about where people are coming mm-hmm. from and then like just talk. Right. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I say talk, I'm not just like, saying just run your mouth but like to ask questions and think about Mm -hmm. it's what is it they do in therapy all the time it's like i statements right um and it's like if i do x what do i get out of that right you know and and so i think it's just like things like that where obviously i'm pulling all of this like secondhand terminology i know from cassidy out right now um but yeah i think that's super important but um if people want to get some one-on-one time with you and get their uh, CEDH therapy session, <laughs> mm-hmm. where can people find you? <laughs> well, with that elegant phrasing aside, um, yeah, if you're, if you're interested in, I'm going to start, in, I'm going to start making, this is how we need to do it for your channel. I've got the mm-hmm. perfect ad for your coaching is CEDH therapy. It's perfect. <laughs> Honestly, you're not wrong. Yeah, yeah. You don't call it coaching, uh, yeah. it's therapy. Uh, if you want any of uh, any more specifics on, on some of the skills I've demonstrated today, as well as like any other aspects of CEDH deck building, uh, that kind of stuff, tackling metagames, all of that stuff, uh, stuff I cover in CEDH coaching. You can find me over at comedianmtg at gmail.com, comedian underscore mtg over at Discord or at comedianmtg on Twitter. DM me any of those places. Super easy to find me. Um, you can check out my we other channel. You a website where people can like just fill out Probably. a form. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's expensive and a pain in the butt to assemble. But yes, I've, I have looked into it. I promise. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, yeah, you can also find me on my other channel, youtube.com slash at comedian MTG. Find me there. Uh, we do tournament breakdowns, tournament reports, all that stuff. Uh, Cal's my lovely editor, which is great. And they're very funny when they edit. Um, yeah. And 
any sort of stuff like that definitely definitely come find me i think like there's there's so many great aspects of that um and i know like something that's been really helpful for folks lately is, is some people have actually brought me like footage uh and we've even oh, been able cool. to like review them playing games and stuff like that and i'm like yeah, oh yeah like, that's you, awesome right right like i was like oh yeah had you said something there like at this point it, you would have been able to completely dismantle this whole board state and they're like oh my god i didn't think about stuff like that right so like these things mm-hmm. come up you know what i mean um and they're they're really huge and and had a lot of really cool stuff happen lately i had uh, one of my patrons or uh, one of my coaching recipients uh reach out to me last weekend and was like hey you should cover this tournament also i top forward in it just saying <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, <laughs> which was really awesome um so definitely uh, a number of them have been doing really well uh, I just lost to one of them in the crew battle yesterday. Uh, Scylla, wonderful, wonderful player uh, who, who uh, yeah, definitely got I mean, good. She has times gone and, from so far in just like yeah, six yeah. months. Like, it's that is, is a huge progression for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's been super cool to see too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, come, come check it out. Also, um, you know, there's, there's so much more in this conversation about dealing with these, uh, these sort of variables in the format, right? So, you know, keep that in mind. Honestly, uh, like, I I, I, you know. I I know I've said this, like, I, I know people are sick and tired of the Survivor analogy, but honestly, just, like, watch Survivor and, like, pick up on how people talk, and it's, like, not the worst, because you can see how CEDH games play out in it. Yeah. And it's yeah, just my, like, my only qualm is like there is a lot more bold faced lying yes. in Survivor, once again, because it's it's imagine one single tournament where you could lie as much as you want, right? Um, well, within reason, right? Because then you have to convince the people who are your allies later, blah, 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 blah. Point yeah. is, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's a similar situation in that sense, right? So it, it, definitely it mostly in how you it. have to like work with other people that you're eventually yeah. not going to be working with because you're right. It right. individualized. Um, mm-hmm. that's, that's yeah, the, the big thing. Day, one person right. wins the game, right? So you can be the best teammate in the entire world, but you got to win too, right? Yes. Yeah. Big part of it. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, well, cool. Well, thanks for coming on to the podcast today, Ian. Uh, you're, you're welcome, co-host. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I, I this this episode really felt like I was doing an interview more than anything. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, this was a this was good. Appreciate it. This this episode mm-hmm. sponsored by the Home Depot. Uh, <laughs> oh my box! Yeah, yeah. I, I've been staring yeah. at that logo all episode long. <laughs> Listen, we're still we're still moving in, okay? <laughs> it's uh, the process. <laughs> don't I had no shame. I have uh if you, you I mean you see my office. If you look in any direction for any in anywhere around my camera, it is chaos incarnate immediately. Um mm-hmm. But uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you want to support the podcast and hear more episodes like this. Uh, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the mind sculptors. If you uh, want to continue to support the uh, what, what did we call it was the uh, the sculpty limes or the, the lime sculptors uh, head oh, on the over lime sculptors. the, the yeah, lime yeah. sculptors, uh, the great lime scooter war of 2023 or 2024. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You can head over there and uh, support the podcast there. Yeah, if you want to run Cal, Cal down the street, you can follow some of our previous instructions. <laughs> <laughs> the Lime Scooter Assassins are coming for us. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next week. We've got the uh, power rankings next week with a special guest coming on. It's been a long time, Ooh. but excited to have him back. So we'll see you next week. 